Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you back to another movie review. And I'm back down here in the closet. <laughs> now, um, this is the computer room. Just right now, there's like all this junk that we inherited. And a lot of my friends that come over like, what, do you live in a closet? Like, like no, it's, it's not a closet. But anyway, I'm back down here in the computer room slash office. And tonight, well tonight, it's nighttime. It's after midnight. After midnight. We're going to let it all hang out. <laughs> I know I can't sing. Anyway, I'm going to review Escape Plan, which I've really enjoyed Escape Plan. Um, I will say it's not really an action film. I think that's one of the one of the problems with the marketing of this film, which honestly isn't a fucking surprise because the way that they market films now is just fucking god-awful. Um, you know, the way they do it now. But um, not yeah, just just the way that they do it is just fucking awful. Sorry, I, I was sending a uh, messaging someone on Facebook, um, friend of mine, martial arts instructor. We're just talking about different stuff. But yeah, just the marketing of of and you guys know because I did the video on the the marketing of films, you know, recently, um, a few months back. But. Yeah, just the way that they marketed this film, they made it to be an action film. I mean, it has action in it, but it's not really an action film per se. It's it's a it's a prison movie. Um, it's not a suspense movie. It's not a thriller. It's just a prison movie. It's just about guys in prison. Um, but I really enjoyed Escape Plan. I did see it in the theater. I saw it with uh, my dad and my brother and a friend of mine, I believe. Yeah, because my brother, because this came out, what, last year? Yeah, because my brother was uh, home from college for the weekend, and we went to go see uh, this movie. That's right, yeah, that's right. And then a friend of mine wanted to see it, so I'm like, yeah, just, you know, come with us. You know, we'll go out and hang out, and, you know, it'll be fun. So we did, yeah, we had a lot of fun um, seeing this movie. But, yeah, I really liked it. It was, um, I thought it was a good flick. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, there's some people that don't like the movie. There's actually some people that do like the movie. You know, the movie's kind of split, but I enjoyed it. You know, I enjoyed the movie for what it was. Um, you know, it was great to see uh, Sly and Arnold together in, you know, a movie by themselves. That wasn't Expendables, you know, because Expendables, it's about the team. You know, it's about everybody. You know, this movie, it was just, it was just these two guys, you know. You know, it's just these guys together in this movie. Um... You know, it was cool to see this. And I thought it's got other people I like. Like, it was cool to see Sam Neill in the movie. Although, what the fuck? They did it a They did it again? This doesn't make sense. <laughs> they didn't put Sam Neill's name on the, on the Blu-ray cover. God damn it. They did it again. <laughs> Ugh. They put fucking 50 Cent on there, but they don't put Sam... Fuck that. God, they did it again. They did it for Expendables 2 and they did it for this movie. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Sam Neill is awesome. God. That pisses me off. Ah, <laughs> now I'm mad. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, I'm not really that mad. But that, yeah, that's bullshit. Why is his name... Because 50 Cent's in, like, three scenes. And Amy Ryan's in, like, two scenes. And Vincent D'Onofrio's not in that many... Whatever. Whatever. I don't fuck... Ah, that pisses me off. God! <laughs> Why do they do this? But anyway... Sam Neill, I like, um, Jim Caviezel, I like him in, in this movie, I like him as an actor, um, Vinnie Jones, I know a lot of people don't like Vinnie Jones, I don't mind him, like, you know, but, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just, I don't like Vinnie Jones, and, or, no, I, I, I like him, I just don't, you know, I don't mind him, you know, it's, I don't hate him or anything, but, but, like, 50s, 
what I meant to say, 50 Cent, I don't like. I don't like 50 Cent at all, you know, but... Sorry. Okay. All right. So let's get into this review. Okay. So yeah, 50 Cent, you know, I don't care about. Um, Vinny Jones, I don't mind him, you know, in this movie. And I don't mind him as an actor. I like Vinny Jones. But it was cool. You know, this movie was cool to see. I think it was, you know, it was something that everybody had wanted to see um, for a very long time. And I, I know, like, I know my buddy Matt didn't really like the movie. I think Mike didn't like it. OCP, I don't think he liked this movie. I don't know if he reviewed it or not. But um, I think Aaron, the Reese 007, I think he may have, like, I can't remember. You know, it's, sometimes it's hard to it's, to keep track with, you know, everybody's reviews and stuff. But I know, I remember watching Matt didn't really like the movie. And that's cool. You know, I understand, you know, it's, it's, it's fine, you know. But I really like the movie. And I will agree because I know Matt, I think even Mike said this. You know, Arnold and Stallone should have made a movie earlier. And I know, like, in interviews, <clears throat> Stallone was like, well, you know, our schedules were never open, you know, and he was always doing this, and I was doing that, and, you know, we didn't have time. And then finally, this, you know, we did Expendables, and then this opportunity came, you know, and we did this movie. But, you know, I wish they would have, they would have somehow, back in, like, 94, 93, you know, somewhere in there, you know, I wish, you know, they would have done a, a, a movie together, like Face Off. Like, I know one of the ideas for Face Off was to have, you know, Stallone and and Arnold in the movie. And not the whole, I don't want the whole shit, you know, I'm going to take his face off. You know, I don't want that shit. I just want them to be, you know, call the movie Face Off and just have... You know, I know Stallone would throw a fit about playing a bad guy. So, have Arnold play a bad guy, you know. And have Arnold and Stallone just be, you know, adversaries and literally face off against each other. Just fight. You know, that would be, you know, that would have been an awesome movie. You know, that would have been a really cool movie. Oh, Mike did like it because he reviewed it. He did like the movie. Okay. I don't think I watched the. Maybe I'll watch it after I'm done. But, I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, I wish that back in the day they could have done, you know, some kind of movie together. Or, you know what would have been really cool, and this is like a fantasy thing, they should have done a Terminator and Rambo movie. And people are like, why? Well, if you think about it, back in the 90s, the same, the company, Carolco, owned the rights to both movies. Because they did Terminator 2 and they did all the Rambo films. That would have been real, like, you know, like Contra. You know, why did they never, you know, for those that remember the video game Contra, why did why did these guys never do, excuse me, a Contra movie? You know, because if you look at the box, I know I have a picture of it somewhere on here. If you have, if, if you ever seen the box for Contra, where, I know, I, I know I have a picture. Here, yeah. This is the one. This is the one. Yeah. Look. This is some one that someone made. But look at the, the box for the video game. There's Dutch. Dutch. Rambo. Rambo. And the alien. The face hugger. You know. See. And if that shit would happen now. Everybody would be getting sued. But back in the 80's. You could get away with that. And they didn't care back then. Why did they not make a Contra movie? You know, that would have been fucking awesome. Nowadays, they'd probably do it, but it'd be all CGI and shit. I don't want that. I want, you know, James Cameron, back when he was cool, or like Paul Verhoeven, or, you know, John McTiernan to direct that movie, Contra, and have Stan Winston do the special effects, and have Arnold and Stallone play the leads. Now, how fucking awesome would that have been back in, like, 86, 87, you know? Unfortunately, it never happened. But that would have been fucking amazing. But fantasy, that's what that's what the power of the mind can do. Create, create your own movie. You know. I 
I understand. Yeah. Why did they just why did they not fucking do that, man? Like God, Contra, the movie, or face off, you know, just literally just fight, you know, no take his face. Oh. You know, none of that shit. None of that stupid shit. But just have them fight, you know, that would have been awesome, you know. But you know, it's all about this yeah, our schedules, no. It's all about that's what it's about. It's about the fucking money. But anyway, I know I'm I'm getting off track here with the uh, the review. But anyway, Escape Plan. Um, I like the concept. I really like the concept of the movie because I like how you know basically Stallone is uh, this guy named Ray Breslin, and he actually runs this security company where they go around and they test out all of the maximum security prisons throughout the world, you know, these, these companies hire them, and they test, you know, they test out the, you know, how reliable these, uh, these prisons are, and I, I liked that, I thought that was cool, because I liked how Stallone, that was Facebook, like, in movies like Cliffhanger, or The Specialist, you know, like, Stallone's playing a different type of character, you know, he's not Rocky, he's not Rambo, He's not a cop, you know, he's, you know, he's different. You know, I really enjoyed that, you know, concept of the movie, you know, where he plays a, a different, you know, he's playing a different type of character, which I really like. So, yeah, he's this guy that, that goes around, you know, and he breaks up these prisons, you know, he breaks up the, the reliability and the durability and stuff like that of these prisons because, you know, he's testing different things to see how, you know, if they can escape and everything. I really like that. I, I really thought that was pretty cool. So the movie basically opens up. Stallone's in this prison, and he gets into a fight with these guys. He beats them up. I think he even kills one of the guys, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, he, uh, he gets thrown into solitary confinement. And what happens is he starts to, uh, you know, watch the guards and start studying, you know, the... the the way that the prison is set up, and then he is able to escape. And once he gets recaptured, um, you know, his buddy, uh, Lester Clark, who is played by uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, and I like Vince D'Onofrio. I really like him in Men in Black. You know, I've liked him in other films. I know he was on one of the Law & Order shows, but honestly, folks, I don't care about those shows. I just get tired of, of Law and & Order and, and CSI. And, you know, I, I just get tired of seeing all those shows. You know, I just, I, you know, they're all, to me, I'm not, you know, if you like those, that's great. I just, I don't like them, you know. I'm just tired of hearing about them. I'm tired of seeing them, you know. Now they got another one coming out in the fall, like CSI, Cyberspace, I don't know, something. But I don't know. But anyway, um, Lester Clark is um, Breslin's partner, and they meet with this guy who is the, you know, the director of the, the prison, and they explain to him how, you know, he got out, you know, and everything, and they're showing, like, the way he did it and stuff, which I thought was pretty cool. I really like that. Oh, excuse me. Um, you know, I, I really enjoyed how, you know, they did that, you know. So what happens is um, Breslin gets this offer from a CIA agent to infiltrate this... Um, you know, top secret, you know, prison, you know, that, that nobody knows about, you know, and there, and there's always, you know, there's always a catch, but the catch this time is, um, his team is not allowed to know where he is and, and, you know, he's not allowed to, you know, give them, you know, uh, a code and everything like that. So, you know, they are, they're offering him like this ridiculous amount of money, and, you know, he decides, okay, you know, maybe, you know, just I'll do that just this once and everything like that. So he does. So he goes down to New Orleans, down there on the bayou to find a gator. <laughs> and he uses like a fake name, um, which is uh, Portos, who's one of the three musketeers, which they say later in the movie. Um, you know, so they set up this, you know, this fake ID and like he's like a terrorist and everything like this. So he leaves his hotel room. And he gets uh, captured by these guys. And they, like, they beat him up a little bit. Um, he has a tracking chip in his arm, which they rip out. And they knock him out. So, and he wakes up, and he's, like, dazed and confused. 
and he's on this plane, and one of the guards, played by Vinnie Jones, um, you know, kills a prisoner and, like, throws him out of the plane. And he sees this, and then he goes back, you know, into, he goes back to sleep, you know, really. He goes back to sleep. So then he wakes up, and he's in the prison, um, and it basically, I really liked how they did this, and they actually shot this movie in a, basically this big warehouse that NASA used to build spaceships, which I guess they don't use anymore, so they actually filmed the, the whole movie there, which was pretty cool. So, basically all the cells are glass, and it's built like a, kind of like a Rubik's Cube, like there's different ones and stuff. I thought it was, it was cool, it was a cool design. So, you know, he meets the warden, um, Hobbs, who was played by um, Jim Caviezel. Like I said, I enjoy Jim Caviezel's work. I, I liked him. I know most people know him because he played Jesus in The Passion of the Christ. But he did this movie called Frequency with uh, Dennis Quaid. And I've always wanted to see that movie because I heard it was a really good movie and and I like the, the concept of the movie. I heard about the plot and everything. And I, I'd like to check that out. I, I definitely want to check that movie out. You know, maybe I, I just got, excuse me, I just got a Netflix account. I made my own night, or Netflix accounts. So maybe I'll throw it on there and, and check it out. We'll see. But, um, you know, he meets him, you know, and he keeps telling him, you know, it's like, this is my activation. You know, this is the code and this is everything. And he's like, what are you talking about? You know, what, you know, what? code and you know like you think you're just you know gonna leave and everything and he's like you know you're a criminal you know you're not a you know what what are you you know oh <sighs> excuse me so anyway so you know uh stallone goes into the prison and these guys, you know, try to pick a fight with them. And uh, Arnold shows up, who's played in um, yeah Arnold, who's played by Arnold. No, um, Rottmeyer, Emil Rottmeyer shows up and stops this from happening. Who's played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he tells him, you know, I'm here to help you. If you need anything, you just come find me. You know, the last time they killed someone, they let this body rot for three days, and they canceled the prison dance wouldn't want to fuck up the prom. I like that line. I thought that line was pretty cool. So this, yeah, this movie's got some good dialogue, um, some good one-liners in it, and it, this actually has more language than Expendables 2. So, yeah, it's, it's got more cursing and stuff, which, uh, honestly, I was surprised about that. I'm like, oh, wait, you know, that's, you know, that's good, I guess. Um, but, yeah, um, you know, I like that dialogue. I thought that di the little line of dialogue was pretty cool. <sighs> Excuse me, it's been a been a long day for me. Long day at work. Good day, uh, good, but just you know, long hours. But that's okay. It's all it's all it's all good in the hood. So anyway, um, so Stallone figures, okay, you know, I'm fucked. You know, I don't know what's going on. Somebody set me up. You know, I got to figure out a way to get out of here. So he goes to Arnold's character, and he starts to become friends with him. And, you know, they they decide that they want to get out together. Because Arnold says, you know, that he worked for this uh, big criminal, uh, Victor Monheim. Um, you know, he worked as a, his security expert, and he got caught. And the reason why he's here is because... You know, they're trying to uh, find out where he is so they can steal his money and everything like that. So that's why Arnold is there. Um, yeah, so Arnold and Stallone basically become friends. And, you know, he's trying to find a way out, so he asks him to do a favor. So Arnold and Stallone get into a fight. And another line of dialogue was funny. He's like, you know, you hit like a vegetarian. I thought that was funny. And then Stallone punches him again, and Arnold's like... That was good. <laughs> like, I thought the, that was funny. You know, it's funny dialogue. So, um, they get locked up into solitary confinement. And, you know, they use these lights to, to mess with them and everything. So, um, Stallone notices that the floor is actually made of aluminum. And the rivets in it are steel. So, he tries, um, he asks Arnold, you know, I need, like, a piece of metal so I can bust those open. You know, I, I can, you know, I can melt them down and, and get out of here and find out, you know, where we are and everything. So, they, uh, 
they're still in there. So Arnold, you know, says, you know, I'll talk, you know, I'll tell you where my boss is, and you know, and you know, I'll, I'll you know, I'll get him, I'll get, I'll get it for you, I'll get what you want. So he goes to see the warden, and he's like, you know, okay, you know, where's the money? And Arnold's like, you know, well, I need a piece of paper. Well, what do you need a piece of paper for? Well, I got to draw a map. I got to show you where it's at. You know. And he's like, okay. He's like, you got ten seconds. And Arnold's like, Arnold's bullshit. And he's like, well, you know, I'm not a very good artist, and this may not look right, and everything. And the warden's counting down, and he's like, it's close though. So he draws it, and he draws like an ass, and he's like, you know, it's right here. You know, it's like up your ass. So they like have a little fist of cuffs. And Arnold goes down on the floor and he grabs this uh, metal plate from the floor. So, you know, he leaves. You know, they send him back to, to general population and stuff like that. And they're talking about, you know, how to get out and stuff. So, you know, uh, Stallone's like... Excuse me. There it was. I knew it was coming. I thought it was going to belch. And there it was. So anyway... um. So Arnold, you know, he, uh, Stallone's like, I need you to do me another favor. He's like, I'm not doing you any more favors, you know. But Arnold's like, no. Or Stallone's like, no, you know, fight him. So he goes up to this, uh, I think this guy is, uh, well, he's Muslim, but I don't know exactly what his nationality is. Um, and he goes up to this guy and he makes fun of him. He's like, I remember, he's like, I know you. He's like, no, you don't. He's like, get the fuck out of here. He's like, yeah, he's like, your, your mother you know, she was the best whore in Marrakesh. She could really polish a helmet. <laughs> so they get into a fight. And Stallone jumps in and fights, like, the other guys off. So they get thrown in there. And he uses this plate and he takes the reflection from the light. And he melts the rivets. And he pops up in the floor. And he's going through there. And Arnold, um, like, starts freaking out. And he's talking in German, which I thought was cool. Because I think the last movie he spoke German in was uh, Kindergarten Cop, I believe, you know, because he was cursing in German in that movie. And so Arnold's, like, praying the Our Father and everything, and he's telling, you know, this guy, like, you know, you're an asshole in German, and the the warden's just like, yeah, whatever, you know, I don't, it's like, I don't give a shit, you know, what your problem is and everything. So Stallone goes through this passageway, and, and he ends up climbing up to the top, and he opens it up and he finds out that the prison is actually a cargo ship, which I thought was cool. You know, it was different. I know people say, well, it was like that in Face Off. Now, Face Off, it was like an oil rig out in the middle of the ocean. This is a boat, you know, this is a ship, you know. Um, so the way they did that is so it would be really, really hard to get out. So, um, so Arnold and Stallone, you know, they start working, you know, to find a, you know, find a way to get out. You know, they start memorizing, like, the, how the guards are, you know, and, and, and what they can use to their advantage. And Stallone keeps getting thrown into confinement, and, and Arnold's like, you know, you can't do this, you know, you got to keep it together. We got to get out of here now. Come on, do it, you know. So Arnold's trying to keep them together, which works, and... Every time we see them, like, Stallone's, like, drawing a family on this table. And he, um, you know, he tells him, you know, what happened. You know, he tells him about his family, how he was, like, a prosecutor, you know. And, you know, this guy, he put away, he said he was going to, he was going to kill Stallone's family and end up doing it. You know, so, you know, we, we get a little bit of backstory on Stallone, which I thought that was cool. I liked that. I, I liked how, again, like, you know, it was... Excuse me, it was a different character for for Stallone. You know, I really enjoyed that. I um, mean, you know, I really enjoyed, um, you know, it's different. You know, like uh, the specialist, you know, a different type of character. So we find out about that, and they start, like I said, they start, you know, uh, learning about the guards. Like the one guy doesn't move a lot. You know, he walks pigeon toe. The other two are always together, you know, and they start learning, like, the routines and stuff, which was pretty cool. And then at this point, um, we find, you know, um, the warden finds out who Stallone really is. And we find out that uh, <clears throat> Stallone's partner, um, Vincent D'Onofrio, is actually in cahoots with these guys. Um, so, you know, he, he sent um, Stallone there and keep him locked up forever. 
you know, to, to get away and stuff like that, and they find out that they offered um, Vincent D'Onofrio's character, you know, like, all this money and everything like that, you know, so, you know, he sold out, you know, Stallone, you know, which pretty, you know, pretty much would happen. So, um, <clears throat> then after that, you know, once they find out who Stallone really is, they have uh, Vinnie Jones watch him, you know, watch over him and everything. You know, just to make sure, you know, everything's, you know, kosher with him and stuff like that. So, in the meantime, while this is going on, um, you know, we have Sam Neill's character, who's the doctor. And he's trying to help, you know, Stallone's trying to get him to help him out. And he's just like, no, you know, I'm just a doctor, you know. And Stallone's like, you know, remember, you took an oath. And, you know, how can you sit there and, and watch you know, this happened, you know, and all this, and Sam Neill has, like, you know, he has, like, a guilty conscience over it and stuff like that, you know, so then he starts to help out uh, the good guys. So, yeah, like I said, you know, um, Arnold and Stallone come up with this idea, you are like, hey, you know, why don't we tell, you know, the warden, you know, f false information about your boss and everything like this so we can, you know, we can try to get a way to get out of here, and they do. So, you know, they start making up these stories and stuff, and, you know, like I said, then we find out that Vincent D'Onofrio's character is in cahoots with the bad guys, because the paycheck that they got from the CIA, like, it's not going through, and they find out about this prison, like, it, it's, you know, it's an illegal prison, it's, it's, you know, all these, like, crime lords and stuff own it, you know, and everything like that, so... So that, that's, you know, then, like, Vincent D'Onofrio gave him up, and they offered him all this money and shit, like I said. So, um, then, um, Arnold goes back to the Muslim guy, and, you know, he, you know, tells the warden, you know, oh, he's double-crossing you, he's just trying to mess with you. Like, they're all, they're all trying to work together. So, the, he tells the Muslim guy, his name is, uh, Javid, I believe, Javid, I'm not sure how it's said, but, you know, he tells him, you know, hey, go to the, uh, you know, go to the warden and tell him this, you know, tell him we're just messing with him and everything, so he does, and, you know, he's just like, you know, all, you know, all I want is to, is for my God to see me, because in Islam, the way, you know, the way that they pray, you know, they pray towards the sun, you know, or the moon, so he lets him go up to, um, the top, which, you know, pretty simple, and, you know, he's praying, and, um, Stallone makes this, uh, sextant, and I know people that, oh, it's sex, no, basically, it's like a, it's a navigation device, um, you, basically, you measure the angles between two objects, and you can find out, you know, where you are, and stuff like that, so he makes one, and gives it to him, and he goes up, and while he's praying, you know, they figure out, you know, where they are, like, latitude, longitude, the weather, like, they find out, like, the, because of the weather, they're, like, they're in, uh, near Morocco and everything like that, which I thought was cool, you know, different, you know, different kind of setting. So, again, once they find out where they are and stuff, um, Stallone goes back to Sam Neill, you know, and like I said, you know, he's trying to convince him to, you know, he's like, you know, you took an oath and, you know, you were supposed to, to help people, and, you know, how could you sit there and let them do this? So then, you know, Sam Neill helps him out, and they send an email to Arnold's boss, um, Victor Monheim, you know, and it has a, like a, a code, you know, and they, you know, the code to pick him up here at this day and everything, which I thought was cool. And then um, Stallone sends out this, uh, like, Morse code to everyone, and it's actually a fake one. You know, it's a fake one, so he sends out a fake one saying that, oh, in, in cell block C, there's going to be a riot, but it's really going to happen in the main cell block. So then they do. So the movie, the beginning, you know, the ending of the movie starts with the riot. So Arnold um, and Stallone, along with the uh, Havid, you know, they work together and they start this riot. So then Arnold and Stallone um, escape. So they're, you know, they're going through the prison. They're trying to get out together. Uh, Stallone fights Vinnie Jones and kills him. You know, he's chasing him through and, you know, he's shutting off the power and the water. Like, you know, he's doing all this different stuff. And, you know, then, you know, um, the warden and his guys are like trying to counteract it. So uh, Stallone, 
goes to um, the engine room, you know, and, and, and does it, you know, through there. Uh, Javid, unfortunately, gets shot. And, you know, Arnold's like, you know, we can, you know, come on, you know, we can make it. He's like, no, no. He's like, you've done enough for me. And, you know, he's like, you know, I'll see you on the other side. And he gives him his gun. And he just starts shooting these guys. He's like, oh, fuck you. And I thought that was pretty cool. He went out fighting, which I thought was cool. Um, there was one thing I forgot to talk about. Um, when they're trying to escape, they see this camera. And they're like, smile. So they smile and they flip off the camera. Like, I thought that was pretty funny. So, while Stallone goes to the engine room to do that, um, Arnold gets up to the deck and this helicopter um, comes to pick him up, which is from his boss. And I thought this was awesome because Arnold, like, gets, you know, he gets to the chopper and he, like, his guys get killed. So he takes the machine gun off and it's, like, slow motion and he just starts shooting. I'm like, yeah, you know, it just reminded me of, like, you know, Commando or Predator, you know, like, the, the good old days, you know. It's just, it was cool, you know, it's just really cool to see that, you know. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's Arnold's back, you know, he's killing people. And I thought that, you know, I thought it was cool. I thought it was really cool. So, you know, Arnold gets into the chopper. You know, he's like, wait, you know, we can't leave, you know, hold on. And Stallone um, starts the water system back up. And he gets in this tube and he gets flushed, you know, which was pretty cool. He gets flushed to the to the bottom of the ship and then he swims up, which I thought it was pretty cool how he did that. And then he climbs up uh, the helicopter because they come down and they pick him up. And um, the warden comes up and... He gives Ar or he get or Stallone gets this handgun, so he's like hanging there, and the warden's shooting at him, and there's like all these oil oil barrels and stuff, and Stallone just goes, boom, and he shoots it and it blows up and it kills the warden and everything. So they go to Morocco, which they were nearby, and we find out that Arnold is actually Victor Monheim because Rottmeier was like a fake name that he used, and we find out that the the woman. From before, the CIA agent um, is actually um, Arnold's daughter, which he said earlier in the movie. He's like, you know, I have a daughter. So he's, you know, we find out, you know, they just basically what they did was they sent, you know, Stallone in to get out Arnold. You know, which I thought that was cool. I like how Arnold, like, he's not a bad guy. He's just a criminal. You know, I like that because he said, you know, oh, my boss, you know, he's like Robin Hood. You know, he steals from the rich and gives to the poor. So Arnold wasn't a bad guy. He was just a criminal, you know, but a good criminal. You know, he's a good guy. So, yeah, they, you know, they explained that, you know, Porthos was the code word. Once he heard that, you know, that's what it meant and everything. So Arnold leaves and he's like, do you need a ride? And Stallone's like, no, I got my own way out. So, you know, we find out, you know, um, Stallone's people show up and help him out. And, um... They catch up to um, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. I couldn't think of his name for a second. They found him in like Miami or something. And 50, 50 Cent goes and knocks him out. And then they lock him in this container on a cargo ship. Which I thought it was pretty cool. He got a good comeuppance. And then the movie ends. But yeah, I really liked Escape Plan. Now, unfortunately, this movie didn't make a lot of money here in the States. I know overseas it made a lot more money. Um, which was good. So the movie overall, it made um, 137 million on a budget of 50 million. So the movie was successful, but I don't, you know, here in the states it wasn't. It didn't make a lot of money. It only made like 25 million here, which is disappointing. But you know, everywhere else this movie made money. So yeah, I mean, it it made money, just not here, unfortunately. But I still think it's a good movie. I still really enjoy the movie, um, you know, for what it is. I've, I've watched it a few times at home here. I saw it in theaters. But I really liked Escape Plan. I think it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, like I said, it's not really an action film. It's a prison movie. Um, and it's not my favorite. I mean, I like Death Warrant with Van Damme more. And my favorite, like, prison type of movie is probably Lock Up. I've really enjoyed Lock Up. I think it's a very underrated film. Stallone did a great job. And I like the supporting cast a lot more. There's a lot of great actors in there. But, um, you know, I really enjoyed Escape Plan. But anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my review for it. And stay tuned because next I'm going to do a rant on The Expendables 3. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.